This video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Okay, welcome back, peeps. I am very excited for this one. If you missed out over on my community tab, I straight up asked you guys, what should I make this week? The most liked reply is what I will do. And you guys liked the heck out of this comment asking me to do everyone's butter chicken. This is a recipe I have been dying to do, so I am more than happy to do it for you guys. And it is something I've never tried before. Will the fact that I have been a sheltered Italian American, ignorant of dishes like this, in inhibit today's video? Maybe. But I will be trying my best when I test the recipes of Vijaya Selvaraju and Maddie Matheson, Varuni Namdar, and Gordon Ramsay. Let me know who you think will come out on top today, and let's get right into this one. Now you guys might have to help me out throughout this one, because although I have done some research, I'm still not entirely sure exactly how much of everything I'm looking for, what this exactly should look like and smell like. I'll do my best to be as descriptive as possible throughout this video so you guys can know what I'm working with. But before I can get into anything, I gotta give a shout out to my friends over at Helix Sleep. Helix is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses to fit your unique needs and preferences based on your body type and sleep style. Everybody's different and Helix knows that, so they came up with a sleep quiz to match you up with the perfect mattress based on your sleep preferences and body type. I've had my Helix mattress for quite a while now and I think it's safe to say I will never be going back to a non-Helix mattress. That sleep quiz nailed it on the head. I'm a back sleeper, I like a medium to firm mattress, and this thing was perfect for me. And I'm willing to bet that the quiz will help you find your perfect mattress too. But if it makes you nervous to buy something you haven't tried, Helix has a 100 night sleep trial, so you get more than three months to make sure you love it. If you don't, they'll pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. And now I am very excited to announce that the people over at Helix and myself wanna share the magic of these things. So if you would like to win your very own Helix mattress, plus two free pillows. Just leave a comment saying that you want one. We will randomly be going through contacting you and you will win a completely free Helix mattress and some pillows. And don't forget, even if you don't win, Helix delivers your mattress to your doorstep completely for free. And as always, if you click the link in the top line of the description, go to helixsleep.com slash David Seymour. You can get up to $200 off plus two free pillows anyway. And as always, thank you so much to Helix for sponsoring today's video. I'm thinking that I want to start with something as traditional as possible, and based on my research, I think Vijaya Selvaraju's recipe fits that bill perfectly. You will need some boneless, skinless chicken thighs and kasori methi, some sugar and salt, ghee and tomato sauce, heavy cream, cashmere chili powder, some plain yogurt and coriander, garam masala, a fresh lemon, butter, and some ground turmeric. I already know what plenty of you are going to be saying in the comments. How is it possible that I have not tried a dish as popular as this one? I don't know. Somehow it's just evaded me until now, but we will be taking care of that today. The first step with this one is to chop up our chicken thighs, get it loaded up with some of the yogurt and spices, and let it marinate in the fridge overnight. You don't have to do that. Apparently, you can just marinate this for a couple of hours and it'll still be good. But I had some time and I figured, why not give this recipe the best shot at being amazing? That's really the only lengthy or intimidating part of this entire recipe. The following day, everything is gonna come together in the pan in about an hour or so. Even though I've never tried this or any other butter chicken, there's some parts of this recipe I already love. Uh, you guys know I love chicken thighs. I think they're so much better than breasts. They're guaranteed to give you a super tender and juicy end product. I love how much butter and cream are in here. Anything's gonna taste good when that is involved. I like that we're browning the chicken in ghee to start to build up some flavors. Send the recipes a little later, just throw raw chicken right into the sauce at the end. And the fact that outside of the marinating process, this entire thing can get done in like 45 minutes. I can tell you this already smells incredible. Those fenugreek leaves are permeating the entire house and probably my whole street. And once all your flavors are married together and everything's looking reduced and perfect, we're gonna plate it up in this giant ramekin and finish it off with a little more heavy cream. Recipe number one, you are looking beautiful and it is time to try it out. So option number one looks pretty good. Uh, did I need to fill up an entire giant ramekin uh, when it's just me eating it? Not really. But she did eat it straight out of the pan, so I figured I would stay true to the video. Wow, very hot. So this is super good, as expected. It's incredibly rich. 
The spices are at the forefront. I love that it's chicken thighs. Those are always so tender and juicy. Uh, and this is where my lack of knowledge might inhibit me a little bit. I would pull back on the Kasori Methi a little bit. That's definitely the overwhelming flavor throughout the chicken and the sauce. Uh, and I kind of want a little bit more heat, oddly enough. While I was eating it, I was kind of waiting for the heat to kick in and it never really did. I don't know if there wasn't enough. I don't know if there's so much butter and cream where it would kind of be impossible. But overall, a really good start and I will be snacking on this as I make the rest of the recipes. Next up today, we've got the legend himself, Matty Matheson. He has become one of my favorites on YouTube to watch. And for his version, I grabbed some olive oil and fenugreek leaves, some tomato sauce and chicken breasts, ghee, heavy cream, ground coriander, garam masala, ground cumin, and regular chili powder, turmeric and tomato paste, fresh cilantro, butter, fresh ginger, an onion, a red chili, some bird's eye chilies, and garlic. Right off the bat, you are gonna start to notice some pretty gnarly differences in this recipe compared to the last one. This is probably the most labor intensive and the most ingredients we're gonna be using in one of these recipes. We're starting with a slurry of blended onions, chilies, garlic cloves, fresh ginger, and olive oil. If that's not gonna end up as a flavor bomb, I don't know what is. And and I could be going insane, but I have watched this video through, I think six times now. I've read over the written up recipe. He doesn't use salt. I didn't think that would be possible in a dish like this, but that's how it appears. I know we're gonna dump in like an entire spice cabinet's worth of stuff in the sauce a little bit later, but it still kind of shocked me to be perfectly honest with you. As expected, that vegetable smoothie was smelling incredible, especially when combined with the ghee. And then right on top of that, we are loading in more spices than my entire extended family has probably used in the last two months. Just tablespoons upon tablespoons of the turmeric, chili powder, the cumin, coriander, garam masala. Even with the tomato sauce in there, this ended up looking so crazy, like dark and intense. If this doesn't end up tasting like I licked the bottom of a dirty spice cabinet, I'll be pretty stunned. Directly into that very scary mixture went some cubed up raw chicken breasts. This seems like a little bit of a missed opportunity to create some fond and like my artiness like we did with the last recipe. But that's what this one calls for, and then it's going to get finished with a whole boatload of heavy cream and unsalted butter. I can't say that it looks bad, especially when it's plated up with some fresh cilantro, but I am a little scared and will be bracing myself while tasting this, so let's give it a shot. A complete side note, uh, a byproduct of cooking with this much turmeric, literally my entire kitchen is dyed yellow right now. The spatula, the pan I was cooking in, like my whole cutting board and sink, <laughs> it's just all yellow. This looks pretty good though. It's like what I think of when I hear butter chicken. Mm. Okay, this is pretty good. I've been like ragging on the spices and the raw chicken. Um, the chicken's cooked perfectly. That 10 minute mark after you put it into the sauce is pretty on point. It could use a pinch of salt, for sure. It would probably benefit from that. I like that the fenugreek is a little bit more on the back burner and balanced with everything else. Um, but I could still use some more spice, I think. I thought in general, most curries are supposed to make you sweat or at least make your mouth tingle a little bit. I'm not really getting that. These first two recipes have been very similar in like ranking overall. Uh, I like the sauce in this one better, but I definitely like those browned up chicken thighs more. And because it is a chicken dish, I'm gonna have to stay with Vijaya for now. Next up today is the Bombay Chef, Varun Inamdar, and I have higher than high hopes for this based on the fact that this might be the most viewed video I've ever tested ever. It's got almost 33 million views, so the expectations are very high. You will need some chicken breast and heavy cream, sugar and malt vinegar, Kashmiri chili powder and ginger and garlic paste, garam masala and fenugreek leaves, salt, fresh tomatoes, some butter and a red onion. Now I gotta nip this right in the bud right now. The only thing I could not do in this recipe was the cashew nuts. Obviously I am allergic, so I will be omitting those and just adding a touch more cream to compensate for the color. We're gonna be starting off by marinating our chicken again for about 20 minutes. This time in a dry rub of sorts with plenty of that chili powder, 
the garlic and ginger paste, sugar and salt. We are going to be browning up the chicken first, which I think is probably the way to go. You guys can let me know how you guys go about this recipe. And then the rest of this is constructed in probably the same way I would do it blind if you just gave me ingredients, told me a rough method, and told me to make it. You chop up your onion and tomato and get them starting to break down and get all blistery. And to the sauce, we add the rest of our spices, a splash of that malt vinegar, some more of the garlic and ginger paste, and just let this thing go over medium-low heat for close to a half hour until everything is broken down and those flavors get to know each other. In order to ensure the most smooth and velvety end texture, this is first going to get blitzed with the immersion blender really, really well. And then before going back into the pan, it's getting pushed through a fine mesh sieve. Some people might cringe when I say this, but as I go through these recipes, I'm starting to get the vibes of a sort of Indian vodka sauce, where your base is obviously some kind of fats, the heavy cream and tomatoes. And then in order to cut that like rich kind of sweetness, we're just using a bunch of different spices instead of that very sharp kind of bitter vodka. At least the way I make it and the way the chefs used to make it in the Italian restaurant I worked at. And very similar to the last few, this gets finished off by reintroducing our chicken to the sauce finishing with some fenugreek leaves, heavy cream, and butter. I didn't think it was possible, but somehow, now that this is finished cooking, my expectations are even higher. I am very excited. Yes, finally, now we are talking. I think it just happened. I think I just fell in love with this dish. The chicken is perfect. I usually prefer thighs, but the way these are cooked is just perfect for this dish. The sauce is just so like spicy, but also like rich and perfectly smooth. There's some sweetness that's coming through from the tomatoes and the sugar. I'm kind of happy I didn't do this first because more than likely none of the other dishes would have been able to compare. This plate, what I'm holding right here has single-handedly jumped this dish into one of my favorite foods, I think. If you like spicy, creamy chicken dishes, I cannot recommend this enough. I think this goes without saying. Last but not least today is Gordon Ramsay's version who has some redeeming to do. He came in second in the King Crab Rolls video, which isn't bad, but it's not up to Gordon Ramsay standards. But I don't know if I picked the best week for Gordon to make his redemption because he uses some chicken stock and spinach, butternut squash and chicken breasts, coconut oil, chopped San Marzano's, some Greek yogurt and curry powder, Frozen peas, a red onion, fresh ginger, and chilies, and some whole milk. To be fair, this recipe came from one of Gordon's live streams where he had to make a recipe as fast as possible. I think he did this one in like 12 or so minutes. But he is one of the best chefs on the planet, so he should be able to come up with something to compete with any other chef's dish. And obviously, this is the quickest and easiest recipe of them all, so I'll be factoring that in as well. I'm just not sure on the ingredient choices here. I have never seen this in my limited knowledge of butter chicken. You guys can confirm if you've ever seen stuff like this too. You've got grated butternut squash and the red onion. We are going to be purely reliant on salt and curry powder for this one. It gets finished with a whole heaping pile of spinach at the end. like. This whole thing seems kind of interesting. And before anyone tries to say that he's not even making butter chicken, it's not even in the title, he like explicitly says it at the beginning of the video. Ramsey and Ten, I'm gonna make the most amazing curry. My favorite curry is the butter chicken. It just does seem a little bit odd that the tomatoes and the cream are kind of like an afterthought in this one. But that does bring me to my final point. Because the simulation is stupid and I'm allergic to all coconut products except for coconut oil, I had to find a substitution for the coconut milk that Gordon uses. And based on what I read, the best substitution for this recipe would be a combination of a little whole milk, Greek yogurt, and the coconut oil. Those three ingredients combined should account for like the taste, the consistency, as well as the color change that we obviously need in a butter chicken. And like I said, it kind of weirdly gets finished with spinach. There's no uh, fenugreek, garam masala, anything of that sort. And what you see is what you get. That is pretty much what entails Gordon's version of this recipe. So let's give it a shot. Mm. 
I don't know if this was a fair comparison because it was a very quick curry in a hurry as he called it but at the same time nobody told him to put peas and like mushy squash in there. The texture is very unappetizing. If you don't have a piece of chicken it's just a mouthful of mush. The chicken is okay. Again they could have done with some browning. It's Probably my least favorite of the bunch. Oddly enough, the one thing I do really like on this is the spinach. Uh, the stems have kind of retained a little bit of crunch, which has not been present in any of these. So if I put spinach in the last one, I would probably like that overall. But this dish, we might have to pretend it never happened and just chalk it up to Gordon messing around on a live stream during the beer virus lockdown. And as I've been talking, it's like separated. So you've got the solid mush here and then like a pool of soupy watery juice. Not his best work, I don't think. Where's some more of the last one? I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big old like. Thank you to everybody who left comments or even liked comments on that community tab post. Look out for more of those in the future because it's pretty fun to do that. Follow me over on Twitter and Instagram if you do not already. And other than that, have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you right back here next time. Peace! Super lazy, try and make a meal tonight. They ain't pay me. Try and supersize my life with my 18. Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision.